Armstrong. Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the Piper Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions, known throughout the land. Wheaties, breakfast of champions, bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Well, right now, we're winding up the regular 1940 baseball season. And I can't think of a better time to remind you of something I told the Jack Armstrong listeners way back last spring, nearly six months ago when the baseball season started. Do you remember what I said about champion baseball performance? How those hundreds of big league stars work and train all season long to help keep in condition for winning play? Well, everything I told you last spring hold just as true today. Champions like Bob Feller of the Indians and Buck McCormick of the Reds can thank good sound training for helping them come through the season with flying colors. The same thing goes for Barney McCoskey of the Tigers and Dixie Walker of the Dodgers. Any number of top-notch ball stars. And I want you to notice one mighty important fact. These players who know the value of training are usually right on deck to enjoy a breakfast of champions morning after morning straight through the season. Yes, this famous training breakfast so many ball stars have been eating all season long is still the number one favorite in the big leagues. And no wonder. When you wade into a heaping bowl full of those good whole wheat flakes, Wheaties, and when you eat your Wheaties with lots of milk or cream and some kind of fruit, you're having a breakfast that's an all-year, all-round winner for keen flavor and bodybuilding nourishment. Sure, those baseball champions like their Wheaties. And plenty of meat Wheaties both in and out of season. Bob Feller himself says, One thing I've discovered since I got into baseball is that a lot of players stick to Wheaties the year round. Now that's a pretty good sign to me that Wheaties really deliver. And as for myself, well, you'll find a package of Wheaties on my table almost every morning, winter, summer, spring, and fall. They're my favorite year-round breakfast dish, and that's for sure. Now there you have Bob Feller's tip off to a swell training breakfast. Yes, sir. When you put that breakfast of champions on your morning lineup, you're in mighty good company. Wheaties are a big league favorite, and they're going to be your favorite too, I know, if you'll get some Wheaties right away. And now, Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Uncle Jim's high-altitude amphibian is winging its silver way westward, high above the Sierra Nevada mountains, and the mighty Pacific is rolling up on the horizon. Uncle Jim is at the controls, and Jack and Billy and Betty are peering out through the windows of the sealed cabin, trying to spot the Golden Gate of San Francisco Harbor. In that harbor lies the small ship that will take them westward to the Philippines and to the Sulu Sea in search of a wrecked yacht with its treasure of rare uranium metal, which Uncle Jim needs in his atom-splitting experiments. Listen. Uncle Jim, is that altimeter right? Why, it reached 30,000 feet. That's right, Jack. 30,000 feet up. Isn't that a grand view ahead? Look how the Pacific stretches out to the end of the world. Not to the end of the world, Uncle Jim. To the Sulu Sea and the sunken yacht. You may think that's the end of the world when we get there, Billy. But how small the mountains look below us, Uncle Jim. And so queer. Like chocolate icing sprinkled with white sugar. <laughs> we made a forced landing among them, Betty. You wouldn't think of icing and sugar. You'd think of jagged peaks and snowfields and pray for just one level spot. Look, we're passing right over a cloud bank. Did you ever see such colors? Why, Jack, it's gorgeous. It looks like the golden fleece that Jason went after. I do believe if I jumped out in it, I'd just bounce up and down. You'd bounce down right enough, Betty, right down to that chocolate icing with powdered sugar you were talking about. Look, there's a regular chasm in the clouds. Why, it's like looking straight down into the Grand Canyon. Yes, and you can see the coastline. But I don't see San Francisco. We'll see it as soon as we get past this cloud bank. There we are, Betty. Look just to the right of our course. See that bite that nature took out of the shoreline? That's San Francisco Harbor. And that silver thread is the longest suspension bridge in the world. It goes right across the Golden Gate. Hey, look at that outside temperature reading. Way below zero. Don't forget that the pressure outside of this sealed cabin is awfully low. The supercharger keeps up the pressure inside. Well, it's so warm in here and so comfortable that you can't believe that bright sunlight outside so cold and thin. You'd believe it soon enough if this sealed cabin should get punctured. The air would shoot out like a tire with a blowout and you'd be gasping like a fish out of water. Stand by the supercharger, Jack, and get ready to control the pressure. It's time we drop down toward the Golden Gate. Right. I'll keep her at normal atmospheric pressure all the way down. 
Easy, Jack. Not too soon. Oh. My mistake. Jump on Jiminy, Jack. Don't scare me that way. For a moment, I thought all the air had escaped. Oh, that was almost serious. I had the wrong valve. Down we go. Oh, are we really here so soon? Why, it's only a few hours since we left Hudson. Well, that's the beauty of Uncle Jim's substratosphere ship. Flies so high, there's not much air resistance. But just think, crossing half the continent in just a few hours. Why, I'll bet Blackbeard's still wondering what happened to him. Yeah, I bet a million he'll be more careful next time when he tries to steal Uncle Jim's papers. But just think, Jack, how close he came. And if he had got away with that chart... If he'd gotten he'd... away with it, we'd have chased him to the Philippines to get it back. Billy, think what would happen if that gang got a hold of that uranium. Why, it might be all they need is put the atom before our scientists did it. And in that case, other people would have airplanes and rocket ships that'd make this ship look like a toy. Why, with the power they could get from the atom, there's nothing they wouldn't be able to do. Watch that pressure, Jack. We're getting pretty low. I'll equalize it, Uncle Jim. We'll soon be low enough to turn off the supercharger. Oh, Jack, now I can see the suspension bridge clearly. But what are all those funny little dots in the harbor? Yachts, fishing boats, and steamers, Betty. Is our boat there? It's there, Betty. It anchored off one of the yacht clubs. When we drop down lower, I'll fly over her. She's going to look terribly small. But small boats are just as safe in storms as larger ones, Betty. Safer sometimes, Jack, if they're well rigged. A small boat rides the big waves like an eggshell, while a large boat crashes through the waves and takes a lot of punishment. Just the same, Uncle Jim. It'll be all right with me if we don't get within speaking distance of a typhoon. We shouldn't if we get radio warnings in time. Pressure equalized, Jack? Just about, Uncle Jim. And here we go in a dive for the Golden Gate. Oh, oh, the bottom's falling out of my stomach. Same here, Betty. Oh, oh, look at the bridge. It's jumping up to hit us. There, we're easing out of the dive now. Feel better now, Betty? Oh, if I could only catch my stomach and tie it down to one place. There, it's gone back where it belongs. Oh, isn't the bridge wonderful? And look at all the steamers and sailboats. Where will you set her down, Uncle Jim? At the yacht club? No, Jack. There's enough runway inside the breakwater. I'll set her down beyond. Shall we fly over our boat? Oh, sure. It's there. See it. All right. I'll circle it. There you are. See that little two-master? That's the spindrift. White hull and gray deck. That's the ship that's going to carry us to the Sulu Sea. Oh, isn't she a beauty? But Uncle Jim, she is small. She look larger when you're on her. And when Jack and Billy fight that mainsail in a heavy blow, they'll think she's plenty large. There's someone going up to her in a skiff. Probably the caretaker. Hand me the binoculars, Billy, and I'll look him over. Say, he looks like a foreigner from here. How's that? He's not an American. Looks like a mixture of different countries. Are you sure? Look carefully, Jack. This may be important. Well, I can't see him now. The right wing is in the way. But he certainly wasn't an American, Uncle Jim. You gonna set her down now, Uncle Jim? Yes, you're in the next cove by those docks. The airport crew expect me there. Listen, you, Jack. There's something I want you to do as soon as I can get you ashore. What is it, Uncle Jim? I may be all wrong, Jack. That visit to the spindrift may mean nothing. On the other hand, it may mean a great deal. I want you to hop a taxi as soon as you get ashore, get back to the yacht club and see what the chap's up to. Why, Uncle Jim, do you think... I don't think anything, Billy. This gang has unlimited money behind them. They'll give us trouble if they can. Be careful when you get to the boat. This chap may be dangerous. We'll be careful, Uncle Jim. Find out if you can what he's doing on the spindrift. If you can keep him aboard without using force, all the better. But watch out for rough stuff. This gang knows a thing or two in the manhandling game. I happen to know that one of this gang is an expert in jiu-jitsu, so do as I say. We will, Uncle Jim. Gosh, I don't want to tangle with a guy who can press a finger in your back and make you turn handsprings. All safety, bits. Belt's tight. Coming down. Beautiful, Uncle Jim. Beautiful landing. There's a boat out to meet us already. Is he one of your airport crew, Uncle Jim? Looks like it, Jack. Now, you and Billy get to shore, hop a taxi, and see what's going on at the yacht club. We sure will, Uncle Jim. And if that man's aboard, we'll keep him there till you arrive. But not by force, mind you. Okay, Uncle Jim. Help me with the sealed door, Billy. It's stuck. Okay. Uh, well, here's the boat, Uncle Jim. Afternoon, Captain Fairfield. Happy landing, I see. Hello there, Adams. Has the airport crew arrived yet? They're on their way, sir. They'll take the ship to the airport. Good. Take Jack and Billy ashore quick and come back for us. As you say, sir. Watch your step, Mr. Jack. Okay. Take easy, Billy. Okay. Just yeah. sit down in the stern seat and I'll have you ashore in a jiffy. Good luck. See you Thanks, later, Betty. Betty. Jack, why should Uncle Jim be so worried about somebody going out to the spin test? Search me, Billy. But you can bet a million that Uncle Jim never gets worried unless there's something to worry about. Well, he wasn't worried until you told him that chap was a foreigner. Well, that's enough to worry anyone, considering what we know. 
That gang that's trying to locate the uranium has brains and money behind it. Yeah, they must have money or they'd never have wasted sending Blackbeard to recover that scrap of a chart. Here we are. I'll swing you around stern two and you can step out. Okay, thanks. Come on, Tex. Thanks a million. Hey, where can we get a taxi? You'll get one in the back if you don't stand hey, right. Hey, look out there. Oh, boy, is that service. Hop in, Billy. To the yacht club, driver. What, Jack? What can anyone hope to find on the spindrift now? We haven't even been on board ourselves, except for Uncle Jim. You've got me there, Billy. But you can bet that something's afoot or Uncle Jim wouldn't pack us off this way. Do you suppose that we could handle a chap who knows jujitsu? I doubt it, unless we closed in quickly and landed a haymaker before he could pull his fancy stuff. Maybe we had better be careful when we go aboard. We're almost there now. It's only a short run. See, there's the clubhouse. And look, there's the spindrift. Yeah, the skipper still made past to her. He's still aboard, Jack. Uh, we'll soon find out what he's up to. Right here, driver. Keep the change, driver, and thanks. Come on, Billy. We may leave the spindrift any minute. But whose skiff can we use to get out to the spindrift? Maybe our skiff's at the dock. <gasps> yeah, there it is, Jack. The name Spindrift's on it. It's got a pair of oars, too, Jack. Jump in. I'll untie the painter. Okay. We don't want him to know we're coming aboard. I'll pull up ahead of her and let the tide and wind carry us down. Good idea, Jack. And as soon as the tide sweeps us on her, I'll fend off so we won't fall. Then I'll make fast. That's right. Hang your rope fender over the gunnels to keep the boats from knocking together. And we'll slip up on deck and see what he's doing below. And we'll keep him on board until Uncle Jim will. Not if we have to use force, Billy. Uncle Jim told us not to hold him by force. And orders are orders. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, gosh, I'd hate to see him get away. Am I heading right? This wind and tide tend to throw me off my course. A little more to the right, Jack. Say, maybe we can keep him on board without using force. Against his will? Sure. Suppose, just suppose that his oars got lost. And our oars, too. <gasps> you mean that... That's right. We'll slip our oars overboard and his, too, before we climb up to the deck. Then he can't leave. But wait a minute, Jack. Neither could we. That's right. We'd all have to stay aboard until Uncle Jim came and got us. Mm, all right, Jack. I'm with you through thick and thin. Get a boy, Billy. Quiet now. We've come far enough. I'll ship my oars and we'll let the wind and tide carry us down. I can't hear him on board, can you, Jack? No, but he must be there. He must have a key to the cabin. A key or a burglar's, Jimmy. Are we going to make it? Looks like the wind will take us out too much. No, we'll make it. Easy now, we're getting close. I'll reach out and grab his skiff and you fend off so we don't... Here, I've got his oars. Overboard with him. And ours too, Jack. Quiet now. You think he heard us? I don't hear a sound, Jack. Okay, then, up we go. I think we've got it. Now what? Do you think the mysterious prowler did hear Jack and Billy? And what is he doing on the spindrift? You can bet he's up to no good or Uncle Jim wouldn't be so worried about him. And when he finds that he can't get back to shore before Uncle Jim arrives, well, the fur will be flying. So listen in, all of you, at the same time tomorrow and see what happens in the new and thrilling adventure when the strange visitor comes face to face with Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Now, there's a world's champion breakfast waiting for you every morning this week if you'll get some Wheaties in a hurry. Eat those good Wheaties flakes with lots of milk and fruit, and you're having a genuine breakfast of champions. You'd better get those Wheaties now. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try Wheaties? For wheat is the best food of man. This is Franklin hey, McCormick Wheaties, saying goodbye Wheaties, until tomorrow for General Mills, makers of Wheaties, breakfast of champions, who have just presented another episode of Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Wave the flag for Hudson High, boys. Show them how we stand. Ever shall our team be champions? Don't throw up.